Hello again, everybody. It's been a while. It's Jay Nielsen, Nielsen's Mountain Hollow Custom Knives. A uh, few tips on some Damascus variations. As opposed to doing the standard laminates with the bars, stretching them out, stacking them, grinding them, folding them over and over. Sometimes that gets old. Trust me, I know I make a lot of Damascus. Um, I like doing canisters a lot. Um, especially a few years ago, I started doing a ball bearing canister Damascus, which became very popular for me. Um, using quarter inch 5200 ball bearings and powdered steel, uh, which is almost like a gray talcum powder to fill in all the voids. Um, I also started doing a long time ago tips from friends of taking Damascus pieces, doing the same process, putting them in a can, filling them with powder, forge welding them. Not only are you using all your extra pieces of Damascus you worked so hard to make to begin with, but you're also making a cool pattern. A lot of times it comes out like a nice quilt pattern depending on what pieces, patterns you have, types of steels, the ways they're angled and everything. Very cool looking. Um, also started making meteorite Damascus recently uh, with a couple KD meteorites in Arizona where I'm taking the meteorite shavings uh, from different meteorites and bits and pieces doing the same process. I always love doing canisters. What I really, really hated was grinding all this steel off. This is going to be your can. You can use different sizes, different thicknesses. This is pretty standard for me, about two and a half, two and three quarter. Keep in mind when you do these, you want to be relatively clean on the inside. And when you do your cap, which I try to keep about the same thickness, I make it so the cap sits inside the can and is welded on. If you just take a can, and the cap and just weld it on the end, it has a tendency when you're forge welding it to pop off. And then you're going to lose more material this way. But again, the big problem is you put this all together, you fill this full of your steels, you forge weld it into one homogeneous piece, and then you've got all this steel to grind off. And until it's etched for the most part, you're not going to be able to tell which is the can and which is the good steel. So you're constantly grinding it, etch it a little bit, see if you can see the pattern. Not there yet, grind it a little more. It gets very monotonous. Those of you who know me and have been in my shop, you know I like to keep things as simple as possible and as easy as possible. There is a lot of hard work in making knives. You don't need to make it any harder than we already have it. So, very, very good friend of mine um, gave me a tip on using whiteout. Um, I don't know if it makes a difference if I have the name or not, but it's regular Bic whiteout, anything pretty much works. Um, I had a problem with whiteout in Canada, which some of you know what I'm talking about. But I get this cheap whiteout from the dollar store. Um, a friend of mine, Rob Decker, told me that something about the zinc or zinc oxide in the whiteout prevents the can from welding to your good steel. Now all I do, as I said, the inside of the can is nice and clean. One cap is on. It's already welded onto the inside. All I do, see if I can get this in the camera, is I fill it up. Well, not fill it up, sorry. I pour enough in to coat it. Let's see if I can get this correctly on the video. I'm going to tilt this down. Give me a second to adjust this so I can try and see what I'm doing. Now, if you see down in here, a little more light. I'm coating the inside just by turning it. Sorry, my camera angle is a little off here. But I think you get the general idea. And you tilt it down, let it flow, and then twist it so it goes off to the sides. Hopefully I don't get anybody dizzy with this. And yeah, a little drippage here and that. That's okay. Okay. Flow in a little more, and you're just going to keep moving it around. You might have to pour a little more in. No big deal, but you just want to coat the inside. And you might get a couple little hard reach pieces or sections. You know, that one side's got a seam in it. So sometimes you just got to take a little extra, pour a little extra in, or you could take a brush. But you just want to get a good coating on the whole thing. Pretty simple stuff. And usually, you go to the dollar store, you can get these tubes of white out for two for a dollar, or if you, you know, really whop an expensive a dollar a tube. But trust me, it's going to make your life way easier for doing canisters.
All right, you get the basic idea, right? All right, let me tilt this back up since I don't have a cameraman here. All right, so you've got your can. You got fairly well coated. Yeah, something like that. Obviously, I do not work in Hollywood. I work in Wyalusen, Pennsylvania, making knives. Okay, so you coat the inside. You let it dry. Um, I try, it depends on the weather a lot of times too. You don't want to let it sit too long. I mean, it's going to take a little while to dry. But sometimes if it's really, really hot out or really, really humid, sometimes the white out will crackle a little bit. And then you've got to touch it up somewhat. But just keep an eye on it. It doesn't take long to dry. Maybe an hour, half hour if it's warm enough, whatever. And you take your second cap. You pre-shape it before this, obviously. And then you're going to take your steels. Like I said, your ball bearings, your scrap steels, your scrap Damascuses, uh, shavings from meteorites or whatever. Just make sure it's all fairly clean because you don't want a bunch of garbage in here. Put it all in there. Then you fill it up as much as you can or as much as you want. You take your powdered steel which I get from Kelly Couples normally. You get it from different suppliers, I'm sure. Then you've got your powdered steel. This is 1095. I like 1095, I always have. But I mean, that's your powdered steel. I mean, look how fine that is. You put that into your can, and you keep filling it up all the way to the brim. And what I'll do, once it's filled and humped up a little bit, start <laughs> tapping it. That'll filter it all down, fill all those gaps. You want to keep doing that and keep filling in more powder until it stops sinking. You want to fill all of those voids. Get as much of that packed up. You don't want any open spaces or gaps. Now, I've had people also ask about uh, putting paper in the bottom of the can or some drops of oil or WD-40 or something like that to help burn out any impurities or anything such as that during the forging process. I started doing out, started out doing that, um, stopped, didn't really seem to make a difference. Okay, as long as you're heating it up properly, everything's clean inside, shouldn't be a big deal. Now when you've got this filled, you put your cap on the inside rim, tap it into place, weld it 99% around. You want to leave a small pinhole in there in the end for any oxygen, any junk, to burn up. It's kind of cool when you first put it on the fire, it'll start sparkling like 4th of July sparkler or something like that. Then you'll get a little flame if there's stuff in there. Um, but that just helps create the vacuum, forges up better into one solid chunk. Now, like I said, the beautiful thing about the whiteout, it doesn't stick. You don't have to worry about this later after it's forged. This is about the same size can of ball bearing Damascus. And if you look, let me try the light thing again. Look and see how well, oh, there we are, this is separated. You see the can there. Let me try this without the light because I can't see anything. You see how well the can separated from the billet on the inside. The can didn't actually stick to the billet and you can see how the end caps popped open but they didn't go popping out. Remember I said about setting the, the caps on the inside? If you didn't do that, you'd probably have more of the steel sticking out and being wasted, something I wouldn't totally trust. I'd prefer to have you know, more solid on the ends. This steel I'm totally comfortable with. So this is what you're looking for. See how well that came out? Let me move it over here. Like I said, I just want to double check and make sure you can see this with the light I have in the shop. Hopefully you'll see it better in the new shop when that's done. Let's see here. Now that just popped right open. Can isn't stuck to the billet itself. Now all you gotta do is peel the can off. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Just give me a second. Okay, here we are again. It only took a few minutes and it was quicker for you guys. But uh Something I forgot to show you. Hopefully the light's bad in here. This is the same welded can that I showed you a second ago in the cold shop. And listen. 
You can hear it rattling in there. It's already a little loose. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my grinder on the vise, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open one side of it up. Don't have to grind the whole thing off. All you got to do is cut a slice in it with the grinder. Then we're going to peel it off. You can actually bow it out more with a vise even. <clears throat> All right. That is going to get a little bit loud. Start out on a higher up end where, like I showed you, it was bowed up, and you just got cut in long, uh, long enough so you can see, you know, little blue lines in it. That's where you're getting the thinner steel. It's getting hot from the grinder. Then you're just going to take the chisel to it. Got a couple seams in it. important when you're pull that other cap off. That's cool. The way the cap just buckled in like that. Alright, the other one fell off already. So very important wear at least one glove. Probably shouldn't be saying that because you shouldn't say wear two gloves, but if you're hammering on this and it slides over, you're gonna slice your hand up pretty well. So just peel this off. Get underneath it and just peel it up. And once you get it started, it's pretty much a breeze after that. Bring it over so you can see that can is totally separated from the abillet inside. Cut through enough to get touch on it, then start peeling it up. Now I just keep it going. I won't even have to peel this whole thing off before this thing comes popping out, I'm sure. I don't get it popping out on me. Lost my end of ice. All right, turn 90 degrees.
pops right out. So we've got a beautiful piece of ball bearing Damascus here with all the, all the extra grinding. The ends are even good. And that's all I had to peel off to get this out. So, now this is garbage. And you can take this, put it right back in the forge, and start making whatever you want. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hope that helped. Hope you give it a try. Anything you could do to help. Nielsen's Mountain Hollow, Jay Nielsen. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.